If this is the first video you're finding from me, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here with the series book tag. This is going to be the version where I talk about books that I read in 2022. Um, I, I read a lot of books in series, and so for some of these you'll notice I have multiple questions, um, or mul multiple answers I should say, but I'm gonna try not to spend too much time on them. Um, and also in the interest of making it easier to organize, I'm just gonna put up book pictures. Um, and Mara from Books Like Woe is the creator of this tag. I will link her um, most recent version down below. And I'm really excited about this. I enjoy getting to talk about books and series specifically. So let's get into it. Number one is what is the best series that you caught up with this year that is still a work in progress? And I can finally answer the Witchlands series by Susan Dennard. Um, me and my friend Hannah from Balgans Books were buddy reading the last few books in the series and I definitely think I'm going to appreciate them even more when I reread the whole thing together. Um, but even without a reread, I just think the world building and the way that Susan Dennard is like pulling all of these characters and plot lines together um, is just really impressive. And also I just really really love some of the characters. Like, I love Safi and Isolde's friendship. Um, I love the relationship between Isolde and Edwin. Like, I just... you can see the common thread is Isolde. <laughs> I really, really love her. Um, and also there's like a few supporting characters where it's like, I have a real fondness for them, and so I hope that things turn out a certain way. <laughs> Number two is what is the best work in progress series that you were still catching up with, or what is the best completed series that you were still catching up with? And I, as far as I know, this series isn't finished, I'm not sure, um, but I'm gonna go with the Graceling series. I was part of a read-along along with A Book Fiend Named Mel and Beautiful Bookish Bethany, um, and it was a really, really wonderful experience. Like, I had read the first three books um, years ago and really loved them, but I had never reread them, and I had never continued on with the two more recent books. One of them just came out, I think, last year? Um, or maybe early this year, I don't remember when, <laughs> when our last live show was, um, but I was so impressed by not only the quality of the original books, like they really hold up, um, but also like the newer books in the series. I, even though like there are th specific things about the stories that I don't love as much as the original, the quality of the storytelling is just as good, which I think is really impressive for a series with such a long gap in the middle. Um, I really recommend this for a really thoughtful, interesting feminist fantasy series with incredible characters um, and really interesting relationships, and it's a perfect example of how you can have a really, really entertaining book or series that also says a lot and does a lot thematically. Um, like, the way that these books talk about, like, rape culture and just so many important issues, I think, is was really ahead of its time when Kristen Kishore was originally writing them, and I feel like that continues into the um, more recent books. So I'm kind of hoping that we're, we're going to continue the series, um, but I don't know for sure. Number three is, what was your favorite first book in a series this year? Um, so I'm going to talk about, these are both, like, surprising uh, favorite first books in that I expected to enjoy them, but I didn't know that I would love them as much as I did, which is a great feeling. Um, so the first one is Dreamer's Pool. This is the first book in the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy by Juliet Merlier. I have said this before, but this book does what I think Robin Hobb thinks she's doing uh, with some of the way that she handles her female characters. I just think this is a really fantastic, like, atmospheric, interesting, thoughtful, character-focused first book in a series. Um, I thought the mystery element was interesting, but I also just really grew to love our main characters, and I specifically love the, like, feminist perspective of this book, and that is, like, the specific thing that um, made me make that Robin Hobb comparison, because I think that this is one of the most successful examples I've ever seen of a book dealing with violence against women, like a, a fantasy specifically. I just think Juliet Merlier did a really, really incredible job with that, and I think a lot of authors think they do that and perhaps don't. Um, so I'm really looking forward to continuing that series. And then the other one I wanted to answer is Rosemarked by Livia Blackburn. This is the first book in a duology, and I feel like this is such an underhyped series. I'm really glad that Bethany recommended it to me specifically because, um, like, it had, I had heard of it. It was kind of on my radar, but, like, I obviously hadn't picked it up. I feel like people don't talk about about it a lot, and I loved this first book. Um, it's really interesting political fantasy, um, and there's also a slow burn hate to love romance, and it's like extra complicated and messy because of the plot of the first book and because of the way that these two characters are forced to work together when they have very different um, ideas about what they should be doing um, in order to fight the, the like colonizing force, um, and also because of the specific way they have to go about it, it also makes their relationship development really, really interesting, and 
I don't want to say too much because of spoilers, obviously, but I really love this first book and I need to finish this series. Number four is what is the first book in a series you read this year that you think should have just been a standalone, not a series? Um, I'm going to go with Heartstone by L. Catherine White. This is the first book in a trilogy that is kind of like a loose historical fantasy and it's also a loose Pride and Prejudice retelling, um, but it's more like the some of the character dynamics and like the setup of Pride and Prejudice but in a completely different like fantasy world like I don't feel like it's as strict as you might think based on the word retelling um but I've pretty much heard from most people as well like this was my experience and I think a lot of other people's that the first book ends in a place where it's like I think the story feels pretty complete and like the part that I really loved about it was the building relationship between the Darcy and Elizabeth characters um and so you're not gonna really have that in the other two books like I actually this is one of the rare cases where I wanted more time spent on the romance plot line versus like the world building and the in the other plot stuff um like I didn't really care so much about the fantasy conflict uh because I was just here for like the Lizzie and Darcy vibes um so I don't necessarily think I will need to continue the series but I might pick up other things by the author in the future number five is what is your most overhyped series of the year <laughs> Um, I don't think this is going to be a surprise for anybody who was watching my channel in 2022, but that's going to be the Realm of the Elderlings series by Robin Hobb. I, yeah, I just really don't understand the appeal of this series. I feel like because Robin Hobb writes really, really ridiculously long books, and because she writes adult fantasy, I kind of feel like people give her more credit than she deserves. Um, and, and then, and I'm sure I've done this, I know I've done this too with like longer books, especially longer fantasy books, where you kind of go into them kind of like ready to see certain things, like ready to see a certain amount of depth and like themes and character development, and I don't feel like that's there. Um, like the second book in the first trilogy, Royal Assassin I think is what it's called, that was really the highlight for the series for me, that is the only one that I gave four stars. Um, and two of my least favorite books I've ever read <laughs> are uh, other books in this series. This are like the series finale for that one and um, I mean honestly just the whole whole like Life Ship Traders trilogy, I, I oh, it just it really infuriates me because I think it is a classic example of a female fantasy author thinking she's doing something when she's really not. She's doing the opposite. Um, I feel like there's a real internalized misogyny problem in Robin Hobb's books to the point where I low-key feel like one of the reasons that she's so popular even with certain readers who maybe take pride in not reading books written by women very often is because there's a lot of books, like a lot of parts of her books feel like they were written by a very very particular kind of like male fantasy author. Um, like the male gaziness of the series is like incredibly uncomfortable um and that happens like throughout the books and I also just think there is absolutely no payoff to her stories like I think that at every point in the story she chooses what I consider the least interesting option because it's like she makes her books predictable in a very specific way because you pretty much know that the answer is always going to be trauma porn <laughs> like that's the direction the story is going to go in and like you guys know I can love a bittersweet book or series so that's not the issue the issue is like the way I feel like she really poorly sets those things up um I feel like her character development which is praised as being incredible is really really lacking like um there's one character in the Life Ship Traders books that people talk about having such an incredible character arc and it's one of those things where like yes her character ends up being a lot better and a lot more interesting but like there is almost no transition and so to me that's not character development to have like a character be one way and then you have like one kind of internal monologue moment and then a completely different character to me that's not character development probably the most overhyped series I've ever read like I just truly don't understand I don't see what other people see and this is one of those things where I I feel like the books are underwhelming like mediocre to bad in themselves but on top of that with all of the praise they get this is really one of my like most disappointing reading experiences I've had because people act like Robin Hobb invented the fantasy genre they practically act like she invented the printing press <laughs> and I, I feel like there's nothing really that she does especially well except for the actual writing style um, and some of her concepts. Like that's it. Character development I don't think is very good at all. Um, I think the payoff of her series 
is is nothing. She gives you nothing. Um, it's like, thanks for reading 2,700 pages. How about you get no payoff? <laughs> um, and then also, like, her world building. Like, I... Some of it is more interesting, but it really feels like a very basic, like, misogynistic fantasy setup in a lot of ways, but it's, like, sneaky misogyny, you know? And I feel like that's even worse. <laughs> or it's even more, like, insidious. So, anyway, um, also the plots of her books incredibly frustrating and once again she makes them predictable because she just like I mean that third um what is it Assassin's Fate is that that one where it's like literally 900 pages of like nothing happening until the very end um and then the thing that happens at the end is again just for trauma porn like there's there's no story reason for it to happen and I immediately knew what was going to happen as soon as it was introduced because like that's what Robin Hobb always does like she's she's so basic anyway moving on sorry <laughs> number six is what is the series that you DNF'd this year and I'm gonna go for two very beloved graphic novel series um Laura Olympus is one of them I read two volumes and like I really I hoped the second volume would be better, but honestly, even my experience with the first volume probably should have told me that this wasn't for me. I find the main romance incredibly uncomfortable. Like, I feel like that the, all of the female characters are over-sexualized and also infantilized in a way that is just really uncomfortable. It's, like, happening simultaneously. Um, and I just, I just don't really, yeah, like, I don't really like the main romance, which is, like, the point. Um, of the series. Like, I think there are some interesting concepts, but I just feel like Rachel Smythe, um, I should have mentioned she was the creator, by the way. Um, I feel like Rachel Smythe, like, not only didn't deal with some of the potential power imbalances, but she, like, actively added more of them. Um, and I'm just, I'm just not into that. Like, I have read really wonderful, um, like, relationship dynamics that do have kind of that messiness or that, like, potential for, um, I don't know, for, power misuse, I guess I could say, um, and that they actually dealt with it, and this one I think really doesn't. Like, the fact that Hades ends up being her employer, I mean, the the really disturbing age gap that happens for no reason, and, like, I know that a lot of retellings of the Hades and Persephone story really play up the, like, Persephone being, you know, really Ill innocent and not having a lot of experience, which is not something I tend to enjoy, that sort of, like, um, that romanticizing of a childishness or like a, a like lack of experience being perceived as childishness um I don't like that anyway but I think this graphic novel uh, series really like leans into that a lot so and then also the other one is Monstrous by Marjorie Liu I only read one volume and that was enough <laughs> um this is really not for me like I do agree that the art style is great and there's some interesting like world and story ideas but um I for one thing I don't think this was like sold to me properly. Um, I bought this volume like a few years ago when um, I was seeing a lot of people talk about it and the way I heard people talk about it is that it was like a fantasy series um, with some like creepy elements or horror elements and I feel like this is actually a horror series um, like with some fantasy elements or maybe it's like a horror fantasy or something uh, because I really just didn't care for that. Not like, oh, this was too much for me to handle, but I just did not enjoy the way that was used in the story. I also think that it was incredibly confusing in some parts, um, and I know people say that, but it's like, I can accept that there's going to be more payoff later in a series, but I need to have the ability to at least put some things together. <laughs> and I feel like Monstrous didn't really do that. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting other things, but yeah, just really underwhelmed by that one. It was not a great year for like trying out hyped uh, graphic novel series. <laughs> Number seven is what was your favorite series finale of the year or what was your least favorite series finale of the year? Um, I All of the ones I picked were like least favorite or like most disappointing because I guess that's just what I went with when I came up with these answers. So obviously Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. Um, I, I truly just don't understand how she even got away with writing that as a book. <laughs> like with how long it is and how little happens and in and, and like the absolute lack of payoff at the end and i keep saying payoff and i don't want people to think i mean everything getting wrapped up nicely with a bow because i don't mean that i mean just like feeling like you got something out of the story um and then likewise with ship of destiny but with the added element of handling rape and sexual assault in a way that i find just 
disgustingly offensive. Um, and I know that she was writing these books a while ago, but like there are, like I've said this before, there are older fantasy authors, there are like classic authors who handle like feminist issues or like violence against women in ways that I think are much better. Um, I just, it, it makes me so enraged to think about um, not only the way that series handles it, but like the way that I feel like Robin Hobb is trying to force us to feel a certain way about um, about the perpetrator, about the rapist, and it just, it, yeah, I, I don't ever want to touch anything Robin Hobb does again. If this is the first video you're finding from me, I'm, I'm sorry. And then I also mentioned a couple that they were not like horrible, but they were just personally disappointing for me. Um, one of them was the Alex and Ada um, third volume, so that's a graphic novel series that I've been really enjoying. The way it ultimately dealt with the idea of like artificial intelligence and like personhood, I don't think it did it very well. And then I also wanted to mention The Bell of Belgrave Square um, by Mimi Matthews. This is the second book in the Bells of London series, and I overall enjoyed the first one. There were a lot of things I liked about it, and the setup for the second one sounded like it could really be my thing, and it was just really middle of the road for me. I think it was too slow. Um, like, the book is just, like, 400 pages, and I think, like, 100 pages of that is, like, just setting up the premise that you already know going in, um, which I think is too long. Um, I'll actually link a spoiler-free video I did, like, a review on this one, um, but yeah, I, and I also just really didn't like the main romance. I liked the main female character quite a bit, but I really didn't care for the male love interest, and, um, I don't know, just some of the particular choices around what we were supposed to view as romantic, I did not enjoy. Not my thing. Number eight is what was the biggest cliffhanger you had in a series this year? And I think that would probably have to be the second book in the Clandestine Magic Trilogy by Colleen Cowley. Um, when she originally published this series, I think she published all three of them over just the course of a, f of a few months because I think she like worked on the series as a whole for a long time and then published it. Um, this was an indie published series and like so it, it's not like there was a long wait when they in initially came out, but after I finished that second book, because I read the series after they'd all been out for a while, after I finished the second book I remember thinking like I can't even imagine <laughs> knowing that I had no choice but to wait for the resolution because like man, I mean all of the series, like all of those books in the series have really explosive, well done, gripping endings, but um, yeah, the second book in particular, the way it ends is like incredibly, <laughs> incredibly intense and stressful, but like in the best way, like in a way that is well done. Number nine is what is your favorite spin-off series you read this year? And this is not really a spin-off, but this is the closest thing I have, um, which is, so this is Christmas by Jenny Holiday. This is a book in a romance series and I'm counting it as a spin-off because they're like, you know, companion books that aren't really connected that much. Um, I just recently, I think, talked a lot about this one in various end of year videos, um, how much I loved it, the characters and the romance and the fact that it is a contemporary that is a hate to love and that I still enjoyed because I think it's really hard to do hate to love in a contemporary in a way that I enjoy. Um, I also loved the two main characters separately. I just really enjoyed them. I am also very impressed that this is a Christmas romance and a sort of like royalty adjacent romance um, that I still enjoyed because I don't tend to like those kinds of books, uh, but I love this one. So I, yeah, just so happy I read that. Number 10 is what is your most anticipated next book in a series that you read this year that will come out next year? Um, and I definitely could count the, I think it's, is it Painted Devils? Um, the second book in the Little Thieves series by Margaret Owens, um, or Margaret Owen. I already own this one and I have not read it yet because <laughs> I'm just working up to it. I love that first book so much. Um, actually, maybe I read the first book in 2021. Maybe that's why I didn't put it down for my answer originally. Um, but one that I think is coming out this year, I hope, um, is the third Tales of the Wendy book by Erin Michelle Skye and Stephen Brown. Um, Hannah and I are planning to buddy read that one, and um, this one is also indie published, so I know there can be delays with publishing it, like it's gotten pushed back a couple times, um, so I totally understand that, but hopefully that is coming out this year. Um, number 11 is what is your most anticipated series to catch up with next year based on what you read in that series this year, meaning 2022? Or what is the series you're most excited to stay caught up with next year based on what you read in the series this year? So I picked two graphic novel series that I don't know if there's going to be any other volumes, but I really, really hope so. Um, and that is the Garlic and the Vampire series for one of them. I loved both volumes. Um, I do think that the second one 
ends in a place that it could be the end, but like I'd love to see more. Um, and then also the Artemis Fowl graphic novel series, the, the new one that is done by Michael Moracci and Stephen Gilpin. Um, by the way, Garlic and the Vampire is by Brie Paulson. I love the Artemis Fowl series and I love these new graphic novels. Um, the most recent one that came out was The Eternity Code and I haven't seen any information on if they're going to continue, but I really, really hope they are because I think these are really good graphic novel adaptations. Number 12 is what is your favorite series that you finished this year? And the theme for this one is duologies because <laughs> um, a few of the books that I really loved are um, our final books in a duology or like sort of a duology. I also I also should have mentioned at the very beginning of this video that a lot of these answers could fit in multiple categories, but I'm trying not to repeat too much. Um, so one of them is Redemptor by Jordan Fuego. I buddy read this with my friend Cozy Reader Kelly and we both loved it. I, I think this duology is so well done in every single aspect and I think it's an example of how you can have really incredible fantasy series that are really well thought out and well put together and like there are authors who can do that in just two books and I think that's incredible. Um, the War I Finally Won by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. I don't read a lot of World War II um, historical fiction but this is one of the really hyped ones and I read the first book in the series and I really enjoyed it and I definitely understood why people think so highly of it but it wasn't until I read that second book that I really like fully got how fantastic the series is and the author is. So um, yeah, I thought that was incredible. And then A Darkness at the Door by Intisar Kanani. This is like sort of a trilogy, sort of a duology, but um, yeah, I just, I think the payoff in that series is so good. And I think it's a great example of how you can have a series that has stakes and consequences and um, like things that, that you can't fix while also still having a lot of strength and hope and again, payoff for the story. Number 13 is what is your favorite episodic series of the year? And I, okay, so one of these, <laughs> A Villain's Ever After is one where I have definitely had some big disappointments in that series. Um, it's one of them that's like all done by different authors and they're all uh, fairy tale retellings that imagine um, if the villain was a love interest. And so a lot of times it's about how they can like spin the story a different way or write it a different way so that the villain is like not actually a villain. But I have had a couple of really big hits. There was, um, I think Gothel and the Maiden Prince by W.R. Gindel was great. Um, and then I think my favorite so far has been Stepsister and the Sister by Nina Clare because that is just like so very much my thing. Um, but yeah, I have really enjoyed a couple of those even though the last few that I've read have been very underwhelming. Um, and then I also wanted to mention the Two Monarchies series which is a series mostly of fairy tale retellings, um, but some of them are not. They're just kind of general fantasy books. Um, this is by W.R. Gingell. These are companion books, but I think you probably should read them in order um, because there are like things that connect to the different books. But I have been really enjoying th that series. I especially really loved um, Staff and Crown, which apparently is a somewhat unpopular opinion, but I love that one. I love the main character. Um, also a very good romance subplot. Number 14 is what is a series that you finally bailed on after holding on to it for a long time? Um, and I picked The Senator's Daughter series by Melinda Salisbury. I read that first book years ago, like I think the first year I started my channel and I hated it, <laughs> but I knew that the other books were kind of companion books and I also, like this is a silly reason, but I had ordered them from the UK to get like the paperbacks and sometimes when I put extra effort into acquiring a book it makes it harder for me to DNF a series, even though normally I DNF series very frequently. Um, so yeah, I just, I really hated that one and I kept holding on to those other books thinking that I would try them and I just finally accepted I don't want to and I'm not going to. Um, and then another one is the, uh, is it the False Prince trilogy? Like the Inheritance trilogy by Jennifer A. Nielsen. I really, really enjoyed that first book. Um, it's a really interesting, like, political fantasy. Um, our main character is this young boy who gets, like, basically forced into training to become like a fake prince basically like they're trying to put like a pretender on the throne and acting acting as if they've like found uh the real prince of the royal family and our main character is one of the boys who gets um pushed into doing that and it is like really intense like the the things that happen to these boys are are messed up um but i do think it is appropriate for the age audience for the most part um because this is a middle grade book and i just thought that one was incredibly clever and interesting and then the second book in the series was just fine and i had the third book and i was planning to read it but i've heard from pretty much everyone that like it's best read as a standalone so i just kind of gave up number 15 what is the series you were most surprised that you liked this year um so i have a series and then i have kind of a 
a single book in a series. Um, one of them is the Fairyland series by Catherine M. Valenti. Um, this one is not a surprise that I liked it. I was really hoping I would, but it's a kind of like concept for a series that could have gone either way for me um, because it is like very kind of flowery and whimsical and I have very specific tastes with those things. Um, so I was a little nervous, but I am so glad that I love those books. Me and My Name is Maddie Ness did a read-along. Um, I will link that playlist down below. It was part of my Not A Genre book club that I started and it was just, it was wonderful. I'm so glad that I love that series. So it wasn't a surprise, but it was like, okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad that this went like the positive way that it could have gone. And then the single book is My Plain Jane, which is in the Lady Janie series, um, which is by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jodie Meadows. Um, and I was really surprised I enjoyed this one as much as I did because not only is it a Jane Eyre retelling, and I hate Jane Eyre, um, but also this one got really middle of the road reviews and I actually, it's been my favorite so far. I really, really enjoyed it. I'll link the vlog where I read a few Jane Eyre retellings if you want to hear more thoughts on it, but I thought this was just really fun and interesting concept. I liked the writing and the humor. I liked the characters and relationships. But then also it was unexpectedly poignant in the way that it handled grief um, and moving on. Number 16 is what is the series that you meant to catch up with or finish this year that you didn't? Extraordinary series by Melissa McShane. I only have two books left and I've been really enjoying the series and I was planning to finish it in 2022 and I just didn't. Historical fantasy series I've been really loving. I love her characters and relationships and um, these are all companion books and I've really been enjoying them and um, kind of the overarching story as well. And finally, number 17 is what is a series you finished this year that you think is greater than the sum of its parts? Or you could say a series that you caught up with this year that you think is greater than the sum of its parts. Um, this is one of my favorite questions. I, I like, I think this is the third time I've done this tag now and I always am excited to answer this one. Um, and this year I think it has to be the Clandestine Magic Trilogy by Colleen Cowley. Because I have said when I reviewed these books before, it's like every book in the series has been four stars for me. So I really enjoyed it and I really loved them, but there was like a couple things kind of holding it back for me. So none of these books are five star books, but as a whole, this series feels like a five stars to me. Um, I just, I love the way Colleen Kelly writes her stories. Um, they're like her writing style is just so. I don't know, it's like perfectly balanced between like the action and the characters and the relationships. Um, there's some moments of humor, there's some really great romance. Um, this is one of the examples of a main romance that I think had the potential to, that I think could have felt, you know, uncomfortable or unequal. But for me personally, I think she did a really great job of um, of like addressing that and working that out between the characters. I just really, really love Peter's character development and um, Beatrix, who's our other main character, she develops as well. I think in maybe less obvious ways, but I, I just really love them separately and together. I really love some of the supporting characters. Um, there are a couple of caveats with this series, which is I think it could have been more inclusive in the way that it handles this kind of um, like feminist fantasy series because it's like looking at misogyny in like this alternate uh, present that sort of feels like a historical fantasy. Um, so I think it could have been more inclusive in the way it handled things like race and um, gender identity. Like the, the discussion of gender is really binary throughout it, which I think can kind of make sense when you, th when you think of it as like supposed to feel like early 1900s and the way that those things wouldn't have been talked about or would have been talked about. So I think there are like reasons for it that kind of make sense, but I still would have liked to see just a little more um, acknowledgement of that. But in terms of like the story and characters and, and how like invested I got in these books, and I do think that it very effectively talks about some of these different like feminist issues in this really interesting genre and story. So like I loved a lot of things about it and even though it's not like an individual book is not like a favorite, I think as a whole this series is definitely one of my favorites. So um, I always am like confused as to how to talk about that series, but I've been really loving it. I finished it in 2022 and I loved it. It was incredible. So that was my very long, I'm sure, <laughs> series book tag for the books that I read in 2022. Please comment down below and you know let me know if you like read some of these books, what you thought. Uh, let me know <laughs> if you agree with any of my unpopular opinions. I'd love to know if there's more of us out there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye. I have actually thought about doing some kind of like general discussion or review for the Robin Hood books that I've read so far, but I haven't done it <laughs> for a couple reasons. Number one is like, I don't know if I have the energy right now to like be that pissed off <laughs> and articulate at the same time. Uh, so I, ju I just don't know how that would work. But also, like, the Robin Hobb fan base can be 
kind of awful. Um, like, obviously not everybody who enjoys her books, but there's a very specific subset of the Robin Hobb fandom that reminds me of, like, certain other fantasy fandoms um, in the way that that they react to any criticism of the books. So, like, I just have not touched that yet. So I think that's why they, I always end up, like, ranting about <laughs> those books so much longer than I think is because, like, I don't have a, like, designated video to do that in because I'm afraid and also angry. 